Game modes are a major part of the new Call of Duty experience. There have been a few COD games that had really good gameplay, really good maps, but then the multiplayer was still criticized because of the lack of variety in the game modes. But what are the best of the best? Welcome to the channel, everybody. Jimmy or Chaos. Today, we're going to do what I think is a totally new topic for the channel, probably going to be a divisive one as well. And I'm going to bring you my list for the 10 best game modes in Call of Duty history. Now, I already know there's going to be a lot of arguing down in the comments of this one, but try to keep it civil. Also, just so we're all on the same page, I'm just going to be counting core game modes, not party modes. Although if you guys want a video about the 10 best party modes, that is something we can absolutely make happen. In fact, if you disagree with my ranking, give me your 10 best game modes in the comments and we'll compare and contrast everybody's opinions. It'll be fun. So strap in, drop a like, make sure you're subscribed. And let's get started with my picks. At number 10, Team Deathmatch. I had to start things off with a simple one. Personally, I've never been a biggest fan of TDM because I've always preferred there being some kind of objective on the map, but sometimes you just want to run around and shoot people, you know? I mean, yeah. TDM has always been the most popular game mode in Call of Duty for a reason, and if you never liked it, you have to admit, it would be kind of weird if a COD game launched and it didn't have TDM in there. I know, some maps have really bad TDM flow, and... The frantic spawns and the lack of proper objectives don't help that. They keep the flow from being consistent. But it is a staple of the franchise, and I had to put it on the list. So I figured I'd get it out of the way at number 10. And with TDM out of the way, we can now get into the more complicated stuff. At number 9, Drop Zone. Perhaps one of the most underrated game modes in COD history, if you ask me. It's a variation of King of the Hill that most people used as an opportunity to go absolutely nuts with their sniper rifle, mainly because killstreaks were disabled. How it worked was an objective would travel around the map, similar to Hardpoint or Classic Headquarters. But once you controlled the zone, a bunch of care packages would start dropping on top of you. Sometimes you get lucky, you get some insane lethals. Other times you just have to make do with UAVs and whatnot. But no matter what, you knew it was going to be uh, an absolutely insane time because everyone was going to be firing like crazy at the drop zone 24-7. And one lucky care package could be what turned the match around. Still not entirely sure what made everybody want to run around in quick scope and drop zone playlist, but I'm sure all of you who played the original Modern Warfare 3 have some fond memories of sprinting around with your MSR and hitting those clips. At number 8, Safeguard. Raise your hand if you remember Safeguard. This game debuted in Black Ops 3, and to me, it was super underrated. It's pretty different compared to the other objective-based COD game modes at the time, but the game flow was unique and you could have some insane moments, especially when the robot was just a couple feet away from the final checkpoint. Safeguard was a mode where a robot spawned on one side of the map. It would only move forward if it had at least one friendly player nearby. The robot's team was trying to deliver it to the other side of the map while the enemy team was simply trying to slow them down and run the clock out. It could get pretty nuts when there were three to four players hugging the robot at all times and doing absolutely everything in their power to deliver it. And when that robot got less than 10 feet away from the final point, things got really insane because everybody would constantly be diving onto it, trying to either push it forward or keep it from moving. It was an insane uh, just battle of tug and war or tug of war. Now, I don't know how well this mode played without jetpacks or would play without jetpacks and wall running, but Black Ops 3... It was pretty cool. So if we ever do go back to jetpacks, I definitely think that Safeguard will make a return. At number seven, Kill Confirmed. Now, I know I said earlier I'm not the biggest fan of TDM, but honestly, Kill Confirmed does enough to make me enjoy it more. KC was introduced in the original Modern Warfare 3. Has since become a staple game mode, appearing in every single Call of Duty game, I think so, that came after it, either as a launch mode or as DLC. It's not hard to see why. Nice middle ground between TDM and something more objective-based. Instead of just relying on kills to score, people would drop their tags on their body. When they die, you already know, and that would determine the store. So if you're not a very good player or you're getting outslayed, you can still make a huge difference for your team by running around and being the tag claimer. Plus, if you paid attention to your surroundings, you could actually earn your score streaks pretty effectively by claiming those tags, which I think was a great adjustment to make it more accessible to newer players without actually punishing the slayers. Great game mode. Stable mode for a reason. And I want to know, were you a tag claimer or were you a slayer? At number six, War Classic. I emphasize classic. Now, few game modes hit the same as Classic War did back in the day. It was introduced in Call of Duty 3, but it was brought back in World at War where it shined. Basically, the definitive way to play that game. 
two teams played a giant game of tug of war across the map with everyone in the lobby fighting for control of one neutral point that would move closer or further away from your home spawn depending on whether or not you were able to take control of it before the enemy did war mode absolutely slapped and it led to some of the most insane battles for control of world at worst spawning points i mean you had maps with tanks airstrikes snipers attack dogs later cod games tried to recapture the mode you had advanced warfare and black ops cold war but there was something about the map design the weapon selection, the atmosphere of COD 3 and World at War that made this mode work better than the later games. Honestly, I think Black Ops 6 uh, could do the mode justice with the way Treyarch redesigned the maps, or, or designed the maps, but we'll have to see. Uh, time will tell. Time will tell if they seize the opportunity of But Classic War, top tier game mode, for sure. Had to make the list. Now we arrive at the top five. Hardpoint. It was introduced, and it was Call of Duty's version of King of the Hill. It's been a fan favorite mode ever since it came out in Black Ops 2. Now looking back at COD history, which I do a lot, seems like Hardpoint was meant to be a replacement for the classic headquarters mode since it relies on a single neutral objective that kind of rotates around the map. But I think the tweaks that Treyarch made to the formula made it way more fun with how fast paced Call of Duty plays. Hardpoint is quite literally just king of the hill from other multiplayer shooters. Location travels around the map, you earn points by having someone on your team standing on it, but Treyarch made sure to do a couple things that made the mode more unique in COD. Gave you points towards your streaks for being the first one to break onto the hill, as well as giving you extra points for every kill you got while you were in the hardpoint, and bonus points every time you killed an enemy player who was standing in the hardpoint as well, which meant earning your score streaks was a ton easier than it was in modes like TDM, and that meant things would get crazy fast. Hardpoint's one of the best competitive modes in COD history. Definitely deserved to crack into the top five. At number four... Search and Destroy. Now, Hardpoint is basically just the COD version of King of the Hill, but Search and Destroy is the COD version of Counter-Strike. Just like Hardpoint, SND had its own little tweaks to make it unique to Call of Duty players, for starters. There's no buy menu in between rounds. You can just choose your custom class in between each round, use whatever you want. In addition to that, kill streaks are enabled in this mode, so staying alive is super important since a UAV or a Predator can be extremely valuable in a mode with no respawns. You already know. One team's trying to defend their two bomb sites, other team's simply trying to blow one of them up, but nobody can respawn until the end of the round, so things get intense. Communication's key. It's also the reason why Search and Destroy tends to be the most social game mode in Call of Duty. The trash talk in SD is honestly immaculate. There's no way a Call of Duty game would ever release without it, I hope. At number three, Demolition. Good old demo. This may be a surprising pick for number three, and you may be a little upset I put it above Search and Destroy, but hear me out. I think people seriously sleep on this game mode. It's basically search and destroy, but everyone on the offensive team has a bomb with them at all times and respawns are enabled and you have to destroy both bomb sites to win the round. Demo is the place to go if you want some of the craziest and most intense firefights of your lifetime. And you could get some pretty insane ninja defuses here since everybody was distracted with all the explosions, gunfire, everything going on on both bomb sites. Not only could you rack up 40 to 50 kills easy in a match of demo, you could also absolutely carry your team in your backpack if you knew the good flanking routes and all those sight lines for the bomb sites. It was a perfect combination of s and strategy with hardpoint insanity. I loved it. Every new COD game should have demolition. It way more people should be playing it. The fact that demo rarely has more than 5% of the community playing it, to me, is a legit crime. And speaking of insanely underrated game modes, we segue into number two, Uplink. This is one of my favorite FPS game modes of all time. I didn't say Call of Duty, I said FPS. But I've also said many times it simply doesn't work without jetpacks, which is probably the reason why it hasn't returned since Infinite Warfare. And I guess Sledgehammer tried to translate it into boots on the ground with Gridiron and COD World War II. It didn't hit the same. Uplink is basically just Call of Duty rugby, and it's fun. A ball spawns in the middle of the map, both teams try to get it to the other team's goal. Running the ball into the goal scores you two points while throwing it scores you one point, but while you're holding the ball, you also get increased health in a one-hit melee attack and a huge score boost for melee kills. So you could go on some insane sprees and earn your score streaks out of the gate. Uplink, probably the best competitive game mode in Call of Duty history if you ask me, but there is another game mode that rarely had more than 5% of the player base participating, which I don't understand, seriously. What's not to love about the mode? It's perfect, and yet there is one more game mode that I think deserves the top spot. At number one today, dear to my heart, the best game mode in Call of Duty to me is Domination. I think, I think it needs to be considered to be the best game mode for Call of Duty gameplay, at least the loop of gameplay. Domination has been in every single COD game since COD 4. 
It's one of the easiest modes to learn, to understand, which is probably why it's usually the second most populated playlist right after TDM. And Dom, three flags, simple. You're trying to capture as many as you can, hold them for as long as you can, with one point being awarded to the owner of each flag every five to seven seconds. Now later COD games awarded extra bonuses, like for capturing flags, killing attacking players, scoring kills while in a certain radius of an own flag, which it made it good for earning score streaks and additional XP. It was fun. It was super straightforward, great for leveling up quickly, and I think it's the best game mode in Call of Duty history. Yes, it does get annoying when people don't play the objective, but for how tightly designed it is and how easy it is to enjoy from both a casual and a sweaty player perspective, I'm going to give it the number one spot today. And I can think of some fond memories of domination matches that were just epic for me. Let me know one game mode that I forgot that I shouldn't have, and I'll see you guys soon.